tainted dog food has many pet owners turning to natural food brands. A voluntary recall by Smucker's company was issued after low levels of pentobarbital was found in gravy train samples. Any pet foods that you are going to see are manufactured by Smucker's or owned by Smucker's are going to be part of the recall. Pibbles and Bits, Gravy Train, um, Old Roy, uh, Skippy. While the Food and Drug Administration stated that low levels found in the food were unlikely to pose a health risk, there is still a risk. According to the FDA, pets that eat pet food containing pentobarbital can experience drowsiness, dizziness, excitement, loss of balance, nausea, nystagmus, and inability to stand. It's scary. But at the same time, this drug has been in pet food, and especially the brands that were recently recalled, have been in the foods for a really long time because those foods have used euthanized animals for a really long time, and this was a euthanasia drug that was found. Smuckers issued this statement. The company has identified the root causes to be a single supplier and a single minor ingredient used at one manufacturing facility. In high doses, the lethal injection drug causes death by respiratory arrest, but low doses over a long period of time could eventually kill the animal. And it doesn't kill your dog the next day. If it did, it would have been recalled a long time ago, but it's a slow death. It kills them over a slow period of time. So when your dog goes in, you know, and is, is eight and all of a sudden they're in, in kidney failure, you just think, well, my dog's in kidney failure. You don't happen to think that the food that you've been feeding for such a long period of time has slowly been putting your dog into kidney failure or liver failure or cancer. You know, all, all that's what these drugs cause. Natalie Brown, owner of Bon Appetit Natural Pet Pantry, said dog owners need to learn how to read the labels. Because you can have a piece of chicken and you can also have a piece of chicken and you can both just say, they're both chicken and you can label it that way, but there's a big difference between a piece of chicken that was old, been covered in maggots on the ground, and then, you know, a hormone and antibiotic free raised chicken breast that was handled in a USDA facility. But sometimes that's not enough. Brown said you need to find out the source, which is why many people come to her for knowledge. That is what we do here is we research every product that we bring in. We want to know where the companies are getting their food sources from, where they're being processed at. Um, you know, there's a, there's a lot that goes into pet food. She said the best way to know for sure is to go organic or feed natural products. We do carry some foods that are made with organic meats, free range meats, hormone and antibiotic free uh, meats, and a lot of USDA meats, um, wild caught fish, um, you know, the reality is though, you know, those ingredients are becoming so high in demand for people that the, it's, it's very expensive per pound to make it for pet food. Brown remembers a voluntary um, recall a little over a year ago on Evinger's recalled. hunk of beef um, made from USDA beef. A, a pug had gotten sick and died, a couple other pugs had gotten sick and that was the food that they had been um, feeding. So they went ahead and they did a bunch of testing because they're like, well, we buy our meat sources from the best that there is. They're USDA. This is approved by the FDA for them to be USDA. Brown said Evinger's hadn't had a recall in 82 years. But after doing multiple studies and finding pentobarbital, a final DNA test at their own expense showed that the USDA meat they were using came from euthanized horses. Meat byproduct is probably the worst because they're not even identifying to you the meat source it came from. So chances are it was euthanized. Brown said while you might pay a little bit more, it's the quality that you're getting that makes the difference. Brown believes in the raw feeding of animals. Uh, this, this is the small batch who mainly raised um, hormone and antibiotic free on all of their meat sources. All their fruits and vegetables that are added are certified organic. This is an amazing company. They were actually one of the first raw foods to ever hit the market. Two brothers own the company and they used to just travel by truck dropping off deliveries to individual families and to little pet stores all over the coast of California. Brown explains that what it says on the bag is in the bag. So it does say chicken, skinless chicken, chicken necks. So you know exactly what the source is. Dogs uh, break down their fats and their proteins first. We break down our carbohydrates first as humans. So there's a huge difference there. So a lot of people think, well, if this is good for me, then this is good for my dog. And there is a big difference there. So you really want to know what you're feeding because you're putting 
if you're cooking at home and you're cooking for your dog, you're putting a lot of time and a lot of money invested into doing it. You want to do it right. Brown suggests visiting a holistic veterinarian or consulting a pet nutrition expert to get the right balances. But no matter what, she believes we need stricter laws for the pet food industry. She said there are a lot of brands that get their meat from the same suppliers. She said what it says on the can should be what's in the can. Make it illegal like these other countries are doing. Make these ingredients illegal because we don't want to die. We don't want our pets to die. We don't want to be dying over, you know, something that can be prevented. Evanger's is a brand she still carries and trusts after doing her research. In Washington City, Melissa Anderson, CEC News.